Okay, Sir James Chadwick, 1945. He was knighted. He became Sir, knighted by the Queen. He is UK, British. He discovered or uh, he, what, how did it word it, the book word it? He, he assured himself. He, he confirmed, good, he, I like that. He confirmed the presence of neutrons. neutrons. What are neutrons? Anybody know what neutrons are? Neutrons are in particles. Neutrons are in the nucleus. They have a mass of one atomic mass unit. What's the mass in grams of a neutron? Right there, there's a, there's a table. A mass in grams. A uh, gram, uh, 1.67 times 10 to the minus 24. 24 what? Negative. Negative 24. Is it grams or kilograms? Grams. Actual grams. That's grams. Okay, well that's what we asked. Yeah, grams. Okay, well, that's what we asked. So 1.67, yes, yeah. times 10 to the negative 24th grams, mm -hmm. or 1 AMU, yes? What's, What's an AMU? What does that mean, AMU? What does that stand for? Yeah. Actual mass. Atomic mass unit. Yeah, atomic mass unit. So what's the charge of a neutron? Neutron is a neutron is neutral. I like that. Neutron, neutral, neutron, neutral, neutron, neutral, neutral zero charge. With no charge. We'll say what? Subatomic particle with no charge. Subatomic particle, I like that too, with no charge. So it's in the nucleus. Zero charge. Discovered the presence was reaffirmed by Sir James Chadwick, 19, 1891 to 1974, the year I graduated from high school. Weighs the same as protons? No, I, the high school isn't the same as proton. The neutron is, no, I'm teasing. The proton is the same as a neutron, and what's the similarity between a proton and a neutron? Same charge? No, weight. Same charge? Proton, neutron is the same charge? No, no. no. They're yelling at me. They're yelling at me. You hear it. You yell at us. I yell at you? I don't think so. Me, I'm just a wonderful person. You were late. Person. <laughs> you were late. Yeah. Yeah, never. You were late. You, were late. you they're, can They're badgering me. They're badgering me. This is going worldwide, and I'm being badgered by little people, 16-year-olds. How, how many people are 15? Raise your hand. Half the class raised their hand. I'm being badgered by 15-year-olds. Listen to Lauren. Listen to Lauren. Like, they call her attitude, you know. So, so a proton and a neutron don't have the same charge. Yes. A proton has positive charge. positive charge, and a neutron has zero charge, neutron neutral. And electrons have negative charges. And electrons have negative charges. And what's the, have a question. and we know the mass of the neutron. And we have a question. Mustafa has a question. Yes. Sir, how come uh, since electrons have a negative charge and protons have a positive charge, why don't they just stick together? Well, they they sort of do, really, in a sense. I mean, there's there's a, a certain there there is an attraction between the proton and the neutron. And when we study the pro, this is just the beginning of atomic structures. The beginning. Okay. And we're going to be talking about the distribution of electrons around the atom. Have you ever asked yourself, you know, when you look at, if you looked at a, a picture of, a, of, an, of an atom, if you could see a picture, if you shrunk to the middle of, a, of to the size of an atom and you looked at it, it would, to me it would look like a, a giant ball and there would be like buzzing around it. And it would be almost like a cloud, like it's buzzing like a bunch of bees. And that's just one electron moving so fast that you create this kind of cloud. Yeah? Like, in other words, if you have a fan going, right, a fan, right, you know what I'm talking about, a fan? They're looking at me like, what's a fan? Fan, you know, fan, like, I'm not talking about a baseball fan. I'm talking about a fan to keep you cool. Blows air. Blows air, okay. Electric fan. Thank you. I, I like that. I, I, that's my uh, electric fan. An electric fan. Okay. Well, you have an electric fan, and 
Do you see the blades when the electric fan is turning? Do you yeah. see the blades? No, you see a, kind of like see a cloud, don't you? Well, that's the idea. Like if I go like this, you're not seeing my finger. You're seeing, you're seeing kind of like a cloud. You know my finger's there. You can see kind of like a cloud. But when the... They're making fun of me. But, but you see, the idea is this. The, this is the answer to your question. If the electron is stuck circling the nucleus where the protons are, what's keeping them there? What's keeping the electron orbiting the nucleus? The positive charge. The positive charge, the positive charge of the nucleus. So there is an attraction. There is an attraction for the, the electron. But the electron is still ever moving. It's ever moving, correct? And we're going to look at we're going to look at the the energy levels of electrons that are close to the nucleus versus electrons that are far away from the nucleus. So yeah, so it's it's very it's very very confusing, but there is a definite attraction, and there's a reason why that attraction is the way it is, and that creates a certain shape that creates a certain shape to the atom. This circling of the electron. But there is definitely a, an electrostatic attraction. Why doesn't the electron just fall into the nucleus? Yeah. Well, the electron has a lot of energy. And it, it, you know, that's one of the mysteries that we're going to talk about. Why, why, does, why does it do that? Yes? And it's like super, super small, way smaller than a proton. It's very small, very smaller, very much smaller. You know, um, a chemist once told me as an analogy, this is not an equation, this is an analogy. I know people are going to be out there, these physicists are going to be out there saying, what is he saying? That's not the way it is. Well, it's kind of like an analogy. Let's say this is a piece of paper. Well, it is a piece of paper, okay? <laughs> Let's pretend it's a piece of paper. Can you do that? Okay. So we know this is a piece of paper. Let's say this piece of paper is a neutron, and it has a, it has a significant mass. We're going to call that mass 1, okay? Is that all right? Now, just the die, just the die from this red marker is going to be on this paper. Now, does the, does the red die, does it have any mass? Yes. It does. Yeah, but is it extremely small? Yes. Kind of negligible, isn't it? Yes. So I didn't realize, can I, really, can I really detect the mass of that red dot? Yeah. If I put the piece of paper on a balance oh, no. No. before I put the red dot on, then I put the piece of paper on a balance after the red dot was put on. Can I? I couldn't Unless really. it's really... No, no, we're not. We're talking about your basic, everyday, pretty good balance, but it would have to be the most incredibly expensive, precise, going out many, many, many decimal places in terms of precision. It would have to be excellent. It would have to have a very, a very good precision, a very low uncertainty, wouldn't it? Plus or minus a millionth, millionth place, maybe. But anyway, the point is this. That that's sort of what a neutron is. A neutron is sort of a proton with an electron bound to it. Kind of, kind of. I'm going to wave my hands. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to explain this really well. But if, if I took a, if I took a, if I took a proton and I adhered, you know, I kind of like adhered uh, uh, an electron to the proton, where there was a tremendous stability as a result of that. That would be a neutron. Be a neutron. Is it as simple as that? Well, maybe, maybe. It might be as simple as that. Now, what's even if it was as simple as that, which is very, what is very complex, is this. What what kind of energy changes would occur if the electron was pulled from that proton? That would be amazing. Things would probably happen as a result of that. Now. Now, when we study beta particles and, and, and nuclear decay, that beta particle, there are electrons that come out of the nucleus. And those electrons that come out of the nucleus are really electrons that the neutron gives up, and then the neutron turns back into a proton. So, but that's for another day. But the idea is this. What do you want to walk away with that analogy? You want to simply walk away with this, that a neutron might not be as special as some people think it is. It might simply be a proton with an electron specially bound to it, creating an extremely stable particle 
which has no charge because no the charge. positive and the negative charge cancel out and you have a zero charge. Okay? Enough about Chadwick. Are we done with Chadwick? Yeah. Yeah, so we're done with Chadwick? Okay. So we're done with Chadwick. We're off, okay? Mark's so excited back there. He's so excited. I'm telling you, the guy is he's a crazy person. Okay, good. Excellent.